Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the concept of molar concentration. And to start things off, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration for you. Okay, so what I have here, I've got two beakers, two stirring rods, two little plastic containers filled with um, a substance I'll tell you about in a moment, and a beaker of water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add approximately 200 mils of water to both beakers. Okay, so I've got approximately a, a very close to the same amount of water in each of these beakers. Okay, now the substance that I've got inside, so this thing's called a weigh boat, if I can show you kind of the side on. So it's a little plastic container, it's got some crystals inside of this stuff called potassium permanganate, KMNO4. Okay, so as you can see, I've got two little weigh boats. In this weigh boat, which contains the solid, I'm going to pour in, I'm going to pour these solids into the beakers in a moment. I've got a little bit in here and I've got a lot more in here. I'm going to add them into the beakers, give them a stir, and then we can discuss what we see. Okay, so what we have is a really bright, vibrant kind of pink colour in each of these uh, beakers. But they don't look the same. Now, I appreciate that this may be a little bit hard to see on the video. Let's see if I can tilt it so you can kind of get a sense, okay, that we've got a, a much paler colour in this one. Let's see if I can get that underneath so you can see. So it's quite pale, whereas then this one is really very dark. It's almost opaque, kind of in, in almost black. So what we have, we've got two beakers. Both have the same amount of water, or at least very close to it, bucket chemistry style. Both have the same substance that's been mixed into it that has dissolved in both cases. But the beakers don't look the same. And now what we're going to we're try and do is see if we can try to explain what's going on here and, and how these two things are different in, the, in relation to some of the concepts that we've learnt so far. So what I've drawn here represents the two beakers that we had here. So I've shown you the beakers. And then the blue dots represent the water particles of the water that was contained in each beaker. So you can see that, remember, each beaker is filled with particles. It's not empty. Um, but so, uh, you know, the, and the, the spaces between the particles are exaggerated because obviously, you know, it would take me forever to, to draw a bit more accurately, but you get the idea. So if we, if this represents the beaker we had on the left, the pale beaker, and this represents the beaker that we had on the right, which was the darker colored beaker, I'm going to use little red colored buttons to represent the particles of potassium permanganate that dissolved. Okay, so remember that we only had a few particles over on this side. So I'm going to represent that as these are, are the particles of potassium permanganate mixed in evenly um, to the solution that we have here. Whereas then this is the one that we have, which is much more concentrated. You know, giving, giving away the kind of term that we're going to use here. Okay, so we have more particles. So we've got few, for the same volume, we've got fewer particles in the one on the left than in the one on the right. So the one on the right has more particles, the one on the left has fewer particles. Okay, and but we, we know it's the same, so it's the same solute, so the actual the stuff that's being dissolved, and the same solvent. So the solute is our potassium permanganate, our solvent is our water. Okay, so we need a way to be able to express the, a, a, a difference of how these things are different. Okay, so if we, if we then look at these, and then say, well, rather than just saying which one's got more or less or fewer particles than the other, let's say that this one's got three particles per container, and this one's got nine particles per container. Okay, so for the amount of water that we had, that this side, this one's got nine, this one's got three, so that is, this one has three times the particles of the one on the left. Okay, and that we could observe the difference in the colour of the two beakers. Perhaps if I put them over here, you can perhaps see a little bit of that difference. I realise the, the lighting's not great here. Uh, probably also could have used a, a little less particles so that you can you can see the difference. Okay, just reminding you that. Okay, 
But now the problem, the problem is that this, this is too general, okay? Because perhaps, um, you know, so if we, we are expressing a difference here, and we can say this is more concentrated, okay? So thinking about perhaps like if you're making up cordial, you know, depending on how much syrup you add to how much water that you have, that you get something that's, that's more concentrated or less concentrated, or we might say more dilute. Is the opposite of concentrated, kind of that it's it's more there there are, there's there's less in there for the water that you mixed it with, but these two these units here are a bit too general, a bit too generic because the particles I'm talking about, I'm, what if I start talking about a different substance like copper sulfate or sugar or you know all sorts of other things, that then it's like okay well actually you know that then that the particles is a, is a kind of generic term that applies, but some particles weigh a little, some particles weigh a lot. Um, and so I want something that translates across different substances a little bit better. Okay, so now what we know is that we have a standard number of particles yeah, that, we med that we talk about in chemistry, and that is we talk about the mole. Okay, so we can use the concept, so particles, we can start to talk about moles. Okay, and then rather than a container where it's like, okay, well, how big is the container? How small? How much water is it? Is it a test tube? Is it a big beaker? Is it a bucket? Is it an ocean? Let's start to talk about a bit more of a specific volume. And so we can use volume in litres to help standardise things. And moles, we can we use our units of mole, M-O-L. So then what we're going to do is that then we can actually express this in terms of moles for every litre. So they're then saying, okay, well, imagine you know, I had a small amount of the beaker. You know, if I pour if I poured that into a into a smaller amount, well, how many particles have I got in there? How much water have I got in there? So we can then express this in terms of units of moles per litre. Okay, so I'll clear this away and I'll and I'll jot down some of the thoughts on that. Okay, so let's sum this up. So concentration is base is essentially the number of particles that we have in the volume of solution that we can translate particles into moles, we can translate the amount of water into a volume in, in litres. So therefore the concentration, let's see if I can see if this marker is a little easier to see, equals moles divided by volume. Okay, so we use a formula or, or kind of we, we can use shorthand to represent this we see for concentration is number of moles n divided by the volume v. Okay, and so what we can do is that we can express this as a certain number of moles, x number of moles for every one liter of solution. Now the reason for that is that then okay, I can I can calculate a concentration by using the number of moles I have divided by the volume that I have, but now I can use a standard unit of volume to now as a conversion factor. Um, to be able to convert between moles, concentration, and volume in litres. Okay, so I can say, all right, well, if I have, I can say if I've got 0.25 moles of a substance in 100 mils, or 0.1 litres, okay, so I can then say I have a 2.50 moles for every one litre of solution. Okay, or I can say, all right, if I have, um, if I have a concentration of 1.5 moles for every one litre, and I have a volume of 250 mils, or 0 0.250 litres, how many moles do I have? So the number of moles that I have, I can say 0 0.250 litres and multiply by my, con my conversion factor of moles for every litre. Okay, and so then I get 0 0.375 moles. Okay, so the idea being that, that this sort of relationship that I can now, I can use a concentration in moles per litre to help, I can either calculate what that is using values that I have, or I can use it to convert between moles and volume. Okay, so it's kind of the fourth arm of the mole calculator that you that we've talked about in class before that kind of that diagram that looks a bit like a compass. Um, now the last kind of thing that I want to, 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 to talk about here, so I'll just clear off this 
Um, I'll keep this bit here. So you write this underneath those examples that you've got. Um, can be, it tends to be expressed in two ways, um, or two sets of units. So moles per litre. And so we use the term, let's see if I can, for a concentration expressed this way, we tend to talk about molarity. Or the other way that it can be expressed is in units of grams for every one litre. Okay. The reason for that is that in everyday life, people need to be able to work with um, units of concentration in all sorts of fields of, of science and of, and of society, but without necessarily under having the understanding that we do of what a mole represents. If you just if you talk about moles to people on the street, they, they're probably going to be thinking either about skin kind of blemishes or you know small furry rodents, and so to so but. Um, we, so we can use the units of grams per litre. Um, so grams per litre or moles per litre. That is just the other way of writing it. Grams per litre is an everyday unit of concentration that people can, can use. So they can say, right, well, I need 10 grams of salt in this solution that is 9 grams per litre, so therefore how much should I get? You know, and they can, they can work out... Um, using ratios and things that they can work out what they need. They don't need an understanding of moles to be able to make sense of that. Okay, but so you will see concentrations worked out either way. And then um, what we, just to, to, to finish things up, that we convert between moles per litre and grams per litre by using the conversion factor of molar mass. Okay, so make sure you take note of that because there are times when you'll need to be able to make those conversions for yourself. All right, so in this video, we've talked through the concept of concentration, molar concentration, of being able to describe how many particles there are in a certain volume of solution, to be able to compare solutions that have a few particles with solutions that have a lot, and then to be able to make sense of how we can express that chemically, how we can have um, a conversion factor we can use in our calculations. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.